I greet you all in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ and Savior. Be blessed wherever you are. Invite your friend. Bring your Bible along as we share the word of God. Welcome on Inspire TV. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share this video with your loved one. Invite your friend. Share the video. Share the link so that we will be blessed together as we share the word of God. Have a silent prayer in your heart that may the Lord speak to you as we go through the word of God. Today we've got a special message that we're going to be talking about that talks about the heart and the mind. God is very concerned because he says the first and greatest commandment is to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, and your strength. That is very important and key to the Lord of God. So today as we are going to share in the word of God, I pray that we are going to be blessed that Jesus may speak to us in our heart, in our mind, in our soul, in our strength. So invite a friend, bring your Bible along so that as we read these verses and share, you'll be able also to read and understand. Because Revelation 1 verse 3 says, Blessed is he who reads. So please bring a Bible so that you can read as we share the word of God. We are going to start, we are going to share from three books today. We are going to share from the book of Jeremiah. We are going to go to the book of Hebrews and our last book as we conclude will be the book of Ezekiel. So we are now in the book of Jeremiah 31. Let's watch there, take our Bibles, the book of Jeremiah 31. I'm going to read from Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34. Jeremiah 31, verse 31 to 34. And I will read in your hearing. Behold, the days come, says the Lord that I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah, not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the days that I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, which, the, which my covenant they broke, although I was a husband unto them, says the Lord. So God is saying, I'm going to make a new covenant with the house of Judah. Why? Because they broke the first covenant. And God is saying, I took them out of Egypt like a husband. You know, you know, a husband holds her wife by her, by her side. And they walk together, protecting her wife. You know, the wife, she comes from the rib. So we need to protect her. So God is talking about Judah, that I took her out of Egypt. I protected her. I loved her. You know, but God is saying, Judah broke the covenant. And then 33 says, And this shall be a covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, says the Lord, I will put my law in the inward parts. I love this. God is saying, when he took the Israelites out of Egypt, he took them by the hand. He gave them the law. On the tables of stone, God wrote with his own finger the Ten Commandments, the Decalogue, the Statutes, the Judgments. He gave them, but they broke the law of God. But the New Covenant, I'm loving it because God is saying, what I'm going to write it in the inner parts. He's not talking about the parts that are inside the body so that they stay there permanent. This is a very interesting topic, my brother. I pray that you are whispering your prayer in your heart so that God may speak to you. Because God is saying he wants to put the law in the inward parts of your body and my body. And it says, and write it in their hearts. I love this. God is saying I want to write the law in the heart. That's what the Bible is saying. That's why I'm I'm encouraging you to bring your Bible so that you can also read with me. Write them in their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. God is saying that I want to write the law, the Decalogue in your heart so that when it's in the heart God is saying I will be your God and they shall be my 
So God is saying, when my law is in your heart, you are now abiding with me. We are not fighting. We are now one. You will be my God. I will be your people. That's what the Bible is saying. So when the law is written, and why is God, the first thing that God speaks about is the heart. Why the heart? The human body functions with the heart. The blood that is circulating in my body as I speak to you, my brother, my sister. It is circulating because my heart is beating. The blood is circulating. So that this whole body can function. So God is saying, I'll put it in the heart. So that you can function like Christ. So you can function like God himself. Boys, mind you, when God created man, God says in the beginning, he created the male and female. In the image of God, God created ye. We are created in the image of God. God loves us that much. So he's saying, I want to put the law in the heart. Powerful statement. So the law in the heart, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor, and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord, for they shall know me. God is saying no one is going to teach anyone. No man is going to be teaching any man, even the neighbor. Why? Because the law is in the heart. We, now, law, we are abiding in Christ. The law is in every man's heart. So we are now one with Christ. Knowing the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them unto the greatest of them, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sins no more. I love this. God is saying, I'm going to forgive all your iniquities and I'll remember your sins no more. This is what Christ is saying in black and white. I pray that you have a Bible along so that you can be reading these words as I read them. God is saying, I'm going to forget, delete Oh, It's not going to go in the recycle bin. No, it's gone with Christ. He's not going to remember them. This is what God is saying. God loves us. God wants us to beat as one, our heart to beat as Christ. That's so powerful. All iniquities, all sin is forgiven because the law is in the heart. We are abiding in Christ. The law in the heart, in the mind. What a powerful statement. Still in the book of Jeremiah. Let's go to Jeremiah 24. Jeremiah 24 verse 7. What is this saying? Jeremiah 24 verse 7. And I will give them a heart to know me. I love this so much. God is saying, I'm going to give you a heart that knows Christ. The heart that I have does not know Christ. The heart that I have is sinful. It's evil. It's corrupt. But God is saying, I'm going to give you a new heart that knows Christ. That he is the creator. He created all things. God is saying that in Jeremiah 24 verse 7. And I am the Lord. And they shall be my people. Christ is saying the fact that I have given them a new heart that knows Christ. They shall be my people. God wants us to be his people. But we can only be God's people if we think like Christ. Do like Christ. Walk like Christ. Eat like Christ. Rest like Christ. That's why Christ says, let this mind be in you that was in Jesus. We have to have the mind and the character of God so that God can draw in us. That's why, that's why God is saying, I will give you a heart that knows Christ. They shall be my people and I will be their God. For they shall return unto me with their whole heart. We need to understand one thing, my brother. My sister. Christ is saying you are supposed to come to me with your whole heart. The problem and the challenge that we are facing today is we are coming to Christ with either half of our hearts, a quarter of the heart, three quarters of the heart, because some, the other part of the heart loves this world so much. The pleasures of this world are in the heart. So God is saying, no, we cannot work like that. Bring the whole heart to me and I will deal with the heart. But the problem that we are facing, because we are on earth, we are running after the pleasures and the love of this world. This world is coming to an end. Christ is saying today, give me the whole heart. Surrender the whole heart to Christ. And Christ is going to bless you. 
So when it comes to the issues of the heart, you cannot come to Christ and say, God, I'm giving you 10% of my heart, 50%. God is saying, I want 100% of your heart. And I want to dwell in you. And I want to put my law in you, my decalogue, my love, my trust in you, so that we might be one. This is what God is saying today. So wherever you are, know that Christ, know that Christ does not want half of your heart. He wants the whole heart. This is what the book of Jeremiah is saying. Jeremiah 24, the last part. With their whole hearts, Christ is saying he wants them. He does not want quarter a third. He wants you as you are. Give your heart to Christ. And Christ is going to abide in you, in your heart, so that you can live a Christ-like life. You can live like Christ, a victor over sin. In each day that you face, Christ is going to be with you. Very powerful. Let's go to the book of Hebrews. What is Hebrews saying? Hebrews 8, verse 10 and 12. Verse 10, Hebrews 8, 10. For this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my laws in their mind. <laughs> I love this. Jeremiah is talking about the heart, the law in the heart. Hebrews comes in now. He's talking about the mind. But we know very well that the mind and the heart, they link. And the seal of God is coming in the mind. But the challenge that we have, the mind is dirty. The mind is filled with so much evil. But the good news is, God is saying, I will make, says the Lord, I will put my laws in the mind. So imagine, Christ is saying, I'm putting the commandment in the heart, the whole heart that you have surrendered to Christ. Hebrews is coming and saying, even the mind, Christ is saying the mind has to have the law of God. Because we are thinking like Christ. We have to think like Christ. But the mind is diluted. It's so much evil. It has to be flushed out by the word of God. That's why God is saying that I have to put the law in the mind. And write them in the hearts. I love this. So Hebrew starts with the mind. And it talks about the heart as well. Like what Jeremiah is saying. And I will be. And, and I will be to them a God. And they shall be to me a people. So God is, what God is saying. When the heart. You give the heart to Christ 100%. He puts the law. When you give Christ the mind. He puts the law. The same law. They connect. God is saying, I will be their God and they shall be my people. Because the law is in the heart. The law is in the mind. When Christ speaks, I understand. Because he's speaking the language that I understand. Because the law is in the mind. The law is in the heart. When my heart beats, Christ beats the same way that my heart is beating. The same, the same temple. If I need a heart transplant, Christ will give me his heart. It will function well and properly because we are one. So that is, so Christ is saying to us today, the mind and the heart, that's why God says, love the Lord your God with the mind, the heart, the soul, and the strength. Because they link together. This body is one in Christ. 12 says, for I will be merciful to, the, to their unrighteousness and their sins and their iniquities. I will rem I'll remember them no more. You know, as we are going through these verses, my brothers and sisters, the conclusion of the whole matter, Christ is saying, I'm going to forgive your iniquities. I'm going to forgive your sins. Why is Christ saying that? Because my heart has got the ten commandments. The mind has got the ten. So we are one in Christ. Because when Christ wrote the Ten Commandments, he is writing his love towards us. He loves us that much. That's why he's saying, thou shalt not commit adultery. Thou shalt not steal. Remember this. God is speaking. Thou shalt not have other gods before me. That's why God keeps on repeating. The first commandment says, thou shalt not have other gods before me. God is saying here that, and I will be their God. And they shall be my people. So we are being reminded about the Ten Commandments. God does not 
want us to have other gods. But we are having other gods. How? Maybe you might pose the question. What are you spending your time doing? Some of us, we are busy on Facebook doing nothing. We are busy on YouTube doing nothing. Busy on WhatsApp doing nothing. Are you giving glory to God by the time, the time that you are spending on those gadgets? We love our properties. We love our cars. We love those things more than God. We have broken the first commandment. And when we break one commandment, we have broken them all. That's why Christ is reminding us that we shall be his people because the law is now in the heart and the mind. So we are being reminded, let us love God with the heart and the, and the soul and the mind so that Christ will dwell in us, so that we can live as victors in Christ. So in whatever that we do, Christ is saying, I will not, I will, and their sins and their iniquity, I will remember them not because now we are abiding in Christ. So Christ is just telling us today that he loves us. He wants us to be in heaven so that we will speak the same language. This is the language of heaven. The Ten Commandments. That is love to us, men. That he created in, in his own image. So let us go back to the Bible. Read the commandments. Because the new covenant, Christ is saying, now the law is going to be in your heart and mind. So that no man is going to teach another. Because we now have one mind, one heart of Christ. We speak the same language. Because Christ is in us. As we conclude, we conclude today's message in the book of Ezekiel. Let's rush to the book of Ezekiel. Ezekiel 11 verse 19 and 20. So we we, we said from the book of Jeremiah, we linked uh, Hebrews. Now we are in the book of Ezekiel as we are concluding our message for today. Ezekiel 11, 19, and 20. And I will give them one heart. You see, God is so gracious. God is so loving. God is saying, I'm going to give them one heart. So all the people that are going to go to heaven are going to have one heart. The heart of Christ alone. Sin is going to be destroyed. God does not want double-minded people. That's why he talks about one love. One baptism. One day of worship. That's the one love that we speak about today. So God is saying, and I will give them one heart. So my heart beats as one. My wife's heart beats as my son, my mother, my granny. My, everyone is going to have one heart. This is written in black and white. Ezekiel 11, verse 19. I pray that you have your Bible as we read the word of God. And I will put a new spirit within you. So the old spirit is the one that is rebelling against God. The one spirit that is fighting God all the time. He say, I'm going to remove that spirit and put a new spirit, the spirit that abides in Christ, the spirit that honors God, the spirit that keeps the statutes and the commandments of God. And I will take away the stony heart. Oh yes, my heart is stony. It's wicked. God is saying, I'm going to remove that heart out of thy flesh and I will give them a heart of flesh. This is what God is saying today. God is saying that I'm going to remove the stony heart. We have stony hearts, my brother. My sister. I as a man struggle, but God is promising me today that he's going to remove the stony heart that I'm struggling with as a man because I am a sinner. I need the glory and the grace of God. I'm a wicked man. God is saying that he's going to remove that wickedness in me. The stony heart in me is going to remove it and it's going to give me the heart of flesh. That they may walk in my statutes. God is saying that when he removes the stony heart and give me the heart of flesh, I'm going to walk in his statutes. There's a man that is, that is Enoch. He walked with God. And right now Enoch is in heaven because he walked with God. So here Ezekiel is saying that 
that they may walk in my we need to walk with Christ each and every day of our lives we need to surrender our lives to Christ and walk with him every day is a new day we need to have victory over sin and keep my ordinances i love this god is saying we are going to walk with Christ we are going to keep his ordinances and do them so we are just not going to be walking and keeping his, his ordinances we are going to do them wholeheartedly because i have given 100% of my heart and my mind to Christ and they shall be my people you see god still he keeps on repeating they shall be my people so for you and i to be the people of god we have to have the heart of christ the mind of christ he keeps on saying and they shall be my people and i will be their god because the first commandment is saying thou shall not have other gods before me so let us know that in whatever that we do christ is saying i'm your god i'm your god he's telling us and praying that i'm going to forgive all your sins and your iniquities because he is our god so my brother my sister wherever you are may the good lord bless us as we share the word of god let us rush in the same book ezekiel 18 ezekiel 18 verse 31 what is ezekiel 18:31 saying cast away from all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed and make you a new heart and a new spirit for why will you die o house of israel ezekiel poses the question or god poses the question he's saying cast away you know you can just imagine to cast away is just to throw everything oh he's saying throw everything away all the sinful attitudes the behaviors whatever you're doing. he's saying cast away from all your transgressions whereby you have transgressed and make you an end make you a new heart and a new spirit. god is saying that i want to make a new heart a new spirit and then he pauses the question for why will you die o house of israel the reason why some of us are going to die is because we've got iniquity because we've got we've got we've, we've transgressed against god that's why we are going to die but god is saying why will you die cast off from all your transgressions and i will give you a new heart and a new spirit. why would you die it's a question that god is asking you and me he's saying live the sinful life that you are living so many so many people have died because of covid-19 because of this pandemic millions have died ever since last year until today as i speak people are still dying but god is saying you are still alive you still you are still in your body is still well you are not sick you're functioning well why should you die in your sins when you're still alive god has given you and i a chance to live today to be called a man living so that we will go to heaven saved if i die today i fear nothing because when christ comes for the second time i know he's going to rise me from the dead because my name will be up there so what we are supposed to fight for in this day and age our hearts our minds is supposed to be christ so that if anything happens tomorrow I will not fear anything because I know that my hand is in the hands of Christ. So he poses the question, why will you die or why Israel? Then our last verse, same book, Ezekiel 36. Ezekiel 36 verse 26 and 27, our last verse as we conclude. Ezekiel 36 26 27 and it says, "A new heart also will I give you." Christ saying I'm going to give you a new heart and a new spirit would i put in you and i will take away the stony heart out of your flesh and give you a heart of flesh and i will put my spirit within you and cause you to walk in my statutes and you shall keep my judgments and do them so as we are concluding god is saying that i'm going to you are going to he's going to give us his judgments and we are going to keep them so god is talking about the judgments the ordinances the commandments the statutes and walking with Christ so god is saying he wants to walk with us each and every day of our lives to keep 
the ordinance and the judgment and the commandment, the decalogue, the Ten Commandments. So whatever that we are doing right now, let us surrender our life to Christ. Let us give Christ the whole heart, 100% the heart, the mind, the soul, the strength, so that you and I will be saved. Even if I am to die today, I fear no death. Because Christ is with me. Christ is with the keys. When he comes for the second time, we will rise to meet Christ in heaven. So let us not fear death. Let us know, because we've learned that we go through a lot of challenges in this life. But let's surrender our hearts, our minds to Christ so that God is in control. We believe as we wait for the second coming of Christ that dying is just merely a sleep. When Christ calls us with his voice, we are going to wake up, go to heaven. So my brother, my sister, I pray that you are being blessed by the messages that are coming to you on Inspire TV. Invite a friend. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and share the page with your loved ones so that we can be safe together with our families. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading of his word. In the name of our Father, the Son, and those who pray. Amen.